All right, what I'm going to do is show how to install the Java plugin for Firefox browser, specifically Firefox 52 ESR, the extended support release, um, the 32-bit version, which will run on 64-bit Windows, x86, 64-bit Windows. Um, that's, based, that's the newest version of Firefox that you can still successfully use the Java plugin with. And whether it's for like some type of business or research purpose or just strictly for nostalgia, this is how you do it. So the first thing you need to do is go get Firefox 52 ESR. And that's kind of considered like an archive release now. Um, I think only like Firefox 53 and above are considered like recent relative browsers, whatever. But anyway, what you can do is just go to a search engine search for Firefox Archive, and then one of the top listing results should be directory listing, pub, Firefox releases, this FTP thing. So click that link, and you can see it goes all the way back to Firefox 0 0.1 version. Um, you'll just want to scroll down that page for a minute until you get to the 50s, and there's 49, and you can see that like 5 is going to be before 5.0 and whatnot. But anyway, just keep going down. You get to 52. Scroll down to the end of that section. And right before 53, you'll see 52.9.0 ESR. And click that. And then here's all the, the various versions. You'll want to look for your specific system in here. If you're using Linux, um, I would suggest maybe even just install a virtual machine if you have to and just use like I'm pretty sure Debian 7 GNU Linux Firefox 52 is like the default one in there so that's like right there that's money um, Mac you're on your own that's supposed to be user friendly you know go figure sometimes doing stuff like this is the hardest thing on Mac um, I, I'm not going to try and cover those details and I don't even have a way to test them to find out if I'm doing it properly you want to avoid this win 64 even if you are using a 64-bit version of Windows because the 64-bit, there wasn't uh, what we call the the traditional browser plugins are Enscape, Net, excuse me, Netscape 2 plugin architecture, and so that's they're sometimes abbreviated NPAPI plugins. They were before these new web plugins that Chrome was like the first one to really start pushing, and then Firefox and others followed right behind. Um, they're just the traditional binary plugins from basically the end of last century since, you know, Netscape 2.0. Well, those were all 32-bit. I think they might have had 16-bit way back when, but anyway, as far as we care, they're all 32-bit. The plugins, as far as I know, any 64-bit browsers just did not support 32-bit plugins without maybe like some kind of hack. So that being said, what you want to do is you want to click on this Win32 folder regardless of what type of Windows you have. And... For me, you'll get your language. Mine's going to be English US. Click in there, and there you go. This is going to be the 32-bit um, version of Firefox ESR, so you'll click that and download it. I've already downloaded it, and then, of course, double-click it after it downloads, install it, and you know, all that kind of good stuff. I've already done that part, so I'm going to go to the next section from there. You can, of course, pause the video and catch up. So... Here we have, this is sort of a help article from Mozilla. It used to be really easy to locate, but I had some trouble now just because I think it's just sort of rolled to the back burner because not as many people are searching for this thing. Um, so I thought I'd leave it open to show for reference, and this is where I found some details that I was missing, those few key steps where it's like, whoa, I'm doing everything, what's going wrong? So what it's going to tell you if you scroll down You'll find sections for, this is all about installing those old school plugins. Let's see if they describe what they are, like Java and Flash and everything. So if we go down here, identifying installed plugins, you can type about colon plugins, and that will give you this page right here that they're showing. And you won't see Java at this point, of course. I'm going to go ahead and just open up my Firefox ESR. When I installed the latest version of Firefox, I also have Firefox 1.0, and 
And so I didn't want to overwrite that because it will try and install in like program files, x86, Mozilla, da da da, whatever, Mozilla Firefox, I guess. So what I did is I made sure during that installation do a custom installation and I added um, a, an ESR suffix to the install folder. So if you have other versions of Firefox that you don't want to mess with, be sure and do that. Let me go ahead and do, um, if I right click and go to properties, I can kind of show you how that looks. So it installed because I'm using a 64-bit Windows. If you're using a 32-bit Windows for some reason, like an old XP or something, if you're like just full on nostalgia mode, then you won't see this x86. But if you're using a 64-bit, then this x86 represents your 32-bit program files folder. And then normally it would just install to Fire Mozilla Firefox like that. But of course, I did the custom install and typed in a space EXR at the end of it. And then there you can see right at, in that folder is where the Firefox executable resides. So that's that. Um, and what you'll want to do too is make sure, I would recommend making sure you're not online. So you'll want to uh, disable your Wi-Fi before you even install it, I'd recommend. And definitely before you open it. Just to make sure like in here, um, you're not going to want it to run like... I told it not to automatically check for updates, so I have to physically click this button for it to happen. But otherwise, it's going to immediately, in the background, probably just start trying to check for updates and stuff. And um, either you're going to end up with a bunch of temporary files and sort of, you know, this uncomfortable state if you're OCD like me about it. Or it's going to automatically update to a newer version of Firefox, which you do not want to happen. So... I'm going to show you right now is basically like consider this is the fresh install of Firefox. You went ahead and launched it and we're going to go to tools options. And I've already set a bunch of these options kind of more to my preference on it. And I'll just scroll through them so you can see I unchecked default browser. That's a personal thing. I changed my startup page to about blank by just putting, you know, show a blank page right there. And then uh, I'll just scroll through. And if you want to be just like me, you can see my settings. These Here's the search engine. I chose DuckDuckGo for the default, and then I unchecked the other ones except for DuckDuckGo and Wikipedia. And after I unchecked them, I selected each one of those and clicked remove that I didn't want, so I didn't have any of that fluff. Um, under content, I unchecked DRM, play DRM content. Most content that I come across, personally, I don't use any like premium services for the most part. And even when I do, I don't like it when they do DRM anyway, but I uncheck play DRM content because that basically provides them with a unique identifier which I don't want I don't and that by unchecking it that also allows me to um, you know I probably will never try and access that with this browser but just with most settings in most browsers I'll uncheck it because if I run into it I want them to complain and let me know hey you know Amazon is one that I've known in the past to use DRM content and I'm like uh, you know what if I go with the premium service I'll just go with somebody else anyway other than that I think these are the default this stuff I just left at the default, the privacy, I leave the tracking protection on, and I just, um, you know, I do custom settings, and I do these, I never accept third-party cookies, and um, I keep them until they expire, it, if I were to just, I could do when I close Firefox, and that's basically, effectively, every session would be a private, private mode, incognito style session, and then, uh, you know, there's those settings if you need to adjust them, or me when sites install add-ons. This block dangerous and deceptive content. Um, some people might prefer that, but what this is basically doing is it's going to bounce off. It's going to report what you're downloading, what you're trying to access to a server. So some people prefer that security. For me, I know that my judgment's good enough, and a lot of times these block dangerous content, in my experience, block stuff that I know that I want. It's very rarely, I mean, I could count the times on one hand that this has ever helped me in the past. Um, and on those situations, I only know it helped me because I bypassed it anyway and went ahead and downloaded the stuff and learned the hard way. So I find for myself, no matter what, on that level, if I'm going to learn the hard way, I'm going to do it. So I don't need to bounce everything off of their server and let them know every single tr thing I'm trying to download. I don't think that's any of their business. And just be smart about what you download. You know, double check the URLs, da da da. Anyway, that's not what all this is about. So I'll just keep moving on. Um, and I, I, I'd recommend unchecking these. I think that's ridiculous that they have, they're so strict on security. That's one of the reasons we can't even run the plugins. But, uh, you know, they'll remember logins automatically for sites. Ridiculous. You know, that's that's just insecure. 
choose not to sync with a personal account. Um, there's my settings for that. I uncheck health report. That's once again, supposedly anonymous data they send back. And over here, I override automatic cache content set to 50 megs. Um, and then I tell it to let me know if websites are storing. I tell it never check for updates. And personally, I say not to automatically update search engines. You may want to leave that checked depending on, you know, if you're having bug problems with their little built-in, you know, say you choose Google or something. I unchecked it, DuckDuckGo still, still seems to work. For me, even though this is going on a year and a half now that since it's been updated, ooh, I'm glad I rechecked this because I, I usually uncheck that. I don't like it to do that. That's bizarre that it rechecked it again for me. So this query OCSP responder servers to confirm current validity of certificates, what it does is it's kind of like checking your downloads as well. Um, most sites are now HTTPS thanks to Google putting out their propaganda that they would start uh, burying search revolts, excuse me, results that were um, not HTTP secured. That was a bunch of BS. I learned that because I was doing a lot of web server administration right around that time and even after and I realized that you know of course they were lying it wouldn't have been fair for them to do that in the first place they were just trying to pressure SEOs to uh, to do that so that for whatever reasons you know I could go into my opinions on that but anyway that being said what this does is these HTTPS sites the green padlock secured or whatever sites it will check it will take that certificate of that site and go to their OCSP server and make sure that that certificate hasn't been revoked. You know, like if that site was hacked and like hackers got that uh, private key and everything, then they could pose as that website and potentially, I mean, it's a little bit of a stretch for all that to play out, but it can happen. So the OSCP server could possibly negate that effect. However, if you're at like a, a really bad secure coffee shop, insecure coffee shop or something, and, you know, if they really want to be malicious, they could also hi effectively hijack the OCSP server address. So even if they were posing as, you know, say that Wi-Fi hotspot decided to put up a thing where they're like, okay, we're going to pretend to be Google. And then when your thing goes, your browser goes to check to see if that Google certificate is legit and make sure that the coffee shop or whoever's not hijacking it, um, well, if they hijack the OCSP server, what they can do is they can just make that server not respond, and then your browser is going to go ahead and send you there anyway. So really, it's another thing where it's just basically the majority of the sites you visit are going to get reported to with the times and dates and whatnot that you're visiting these sites, and it's not offering you the full security benefits, so that's why I uncheck that. But anyway, that's why I do all those things. So if we come in here, we can also now go about plugins and we can see that there's no job I can't scroll down here um, they have this is the video plugin of course for this version of Firefox it's kind of weird they're using my Firefox 1.0 profile I've never been too happy about their profile management here but anyway everything seems to work in both browsers still and this is a Wacom, Wacom tablet plugin. It's just if anybody has one of those, they're familiar with it. Most people probably won't see this plugin. They'll probably just see this one that's defaults from Mozilla. So, yeah. And then if about this time, if you've been following through, you can go to about Firefox and it should say check for updates. You make sure you're not on Wi-Fi, of course. And otherwise, if it's spinning and saying checking for updates or no update available or something besides this big button, then make sure you go into that tools options and uh, and come down what was it in advanced update and put never check for updates not recommended security risk whatever um, this browser for the most part to my knowledge still should be pretty secure okay so from there what we're gonna do close the browser and if we scroll down a little further in here we can see plugin location for Mozilla 20 and below. Mozilla 20 and below, uh, you know, in this day and age is considered pretty ancient. Most people shouldn't have that. If you do, I applaud you. That's pretty cool. Um, we're going to be 22 and above most likely, very most likely. But if you want to try it with an older version, a lot of the same stuff applies. 
and you can of course come in here and dig in and read for yourself these specific uh, plugin details so starting version 22 and above the path is included and in about plugins list okay big deal that's not something of course there's Linux and Mac instructions you can dig in and follow those on your own on Windows common plugins are located via plugin scanning plugins may also be detected if found in the following other locations which do not exist by default so app data Mozilla plugins folder you can literally just copy this highlight it right click copy and go to your command prompt and then just CD space right click to paste it in and you're there you don't it will that uh, percent app data percent thing will expand to your um, your app data folder right there or actually I guess app data roaming it will even expand to so that will automatically type whatever that happens to be for you and then if you do a DIR you can see okay this is empty so this is one place where you can copy and paste the plugin I'm about to show you and then the other one would be your profile folder which of course would be um, you know just the users your username that would be your profile folder to my knowledge and then a plugins folder below that all these plugin folders don't forget they have the s they're plural and right here is the way I like to do it but um, if you don't have system administrator access then you won't be able to install it here so you'll probably want to install it in the app data or the profile folder otherwise I think what is that user profile I'm going to go ahead and try and get to that one too CD profile percent yeah so basically you can type CD user profile just like that or it's going to be users plural profile uh, profile name um, on Windows XP and 2000 and stuff like that I believe what was it my documents folder like see my it's been so long now I don't remember but anyway that's how you get to it and then you do CD plugins and that's not there so you could do an MK plugins oh, excuse me plugins that should do it I'm not going to do it here right now like that um, I'm going to go ahead and do this. See, on 32 bit Windows program files, Mozilla plugins starting Firefox 21, no longer scanned unless the plugins load app directory plugins is there. So, Firefox 21 and above. So, what I'm doing will only install the plugin in this specific version of Firefox right here, to my knowledge. Excuse me. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go I'll go here and I'll go. Okay, so I know that if I go into program files, so I don't think I showed how to download Java yet. And then here's another supplemental page about the profile folder in Firefox. To get there, um, we shouldn't have to do that for... I think this is only for the really old versions of Firefox. You'll probably have to do this, but you'll go to uh, a, about support actually about support. And then you scroll down and you'll see uh, where's profile folder right here. And if you need to control F and just type profile and that will find it for you. And then you click open folder and that will take you to this profile folder. And what you'll want to do if you're having trouble as a last resort scroll down and delete this plugin reg dot dat and that will force it to scan for new plugins again so that being said I'll close there's the URL if you want to get to the details on all about that kind of stuff oh it's documents and settings on Windows XP in 2000 if you're going that route and so what we'll type in is open JDK 8 and your first result is going to be this um, official OpenJDK page, but don't go there because that's a really early reference edition. That's just, um, that's more for like OpenJDK 8 is open. It's no longer Oracle JDK 8, which is good because we don't want that proprietary trap anyway, really. But um, anyway, that's not how you get the latest and greatest kind of uh, OpenJDK thing. And so right here, it's the same thing. It's just going to install. We don't want any of that. Just keep scrolling down, and eventually you should find Adopt OpenJDK, and that's where you want to go. So click on that one. What's going on? Oh, okay. So after you verify that, that Firefox install, you know it's not going to try and auto-update, then don't forget, of course, to turn on Wi-Fi. Turn it back on. 
and just give it a second to reload and then click reload here and so here's pre-built open jdk binaries for free so what they're doing is they're taking the source code and building the more modern you know a recent release of jdk and not that old reference version that the open jdk net would take you to but you don't want these because they're not quite you know they've kind of just tuned at just the fewest little things that kind of offset stuff so it's not what you expect right here for one thing it's a 64 bit and that's you don't want that so what you'll want to do is down here and you know almost kind of fine print it says open jdk now also distributes open jdk upstream builds by red hat that's what you want and you ideally don't want to get them even from red hat because red hat's kind of like behind the scenes they're really the one who does most of the handling of that official oracle stuff and they make you register and all that kind of stuff so i like to keep it as free and open as possible so this is the secret url link to get to you know not tweaked by open jdk project and not kind of hidden behind a little proprietary wall like red hat and so we get here it's like what are these binaries um i didn't check for the 32-bit version in here so this is interesting operating system windows architecture they only have x64 huh okay let's see if we can do this anyway source zip where's this zip gonna be at it's gonna be on github you for sure want the jre at least the jre is just gonna be the runtime java runtime environment so that will allow you to run um, programs that are already compiled but hey we're probably if we're dinking with java you know you can get the jdk and it's going to give you the jre as well and that's of course the java development kit it's the sdk for java so i'm going to right click this and go copy link address and get a little bit tricky Control v to paste that in here and i'm going to get rid of this zip file off the end here and just go to uh you know effectively upstream binary 1108.10 hmm okay i'm going to go all the way back and just effectively go to github com adopt open jdk we'll just dig in from there and then scroll down here a little bit and it looks like probably open jdk build is going to be the best one to go to where's releases i'm not seeing that issues project which Probably, I knew I should have tested this out before I came in here. So here we have OpenJDK 8, OpenJDK 10. Let's go ahead and I'm going to highlight this. What you can do is you can right click and just say go there, but just in case you don't have that feature in whatever browser, I'm just going to copy and I'll open a new thing and just paste it in there and go there. Okay, so there's where we are now and it's OpenJDK. The updates to open jdk 8 is there releases up here pull request issue code action projects why is there no releases back in the day i found where they were readme builds let's see if this takes us Sorry that I didn't have this all figured out. I can, you know what, now that I think of it, let's go to that, um, let's go back on what I said to do. I think there is a little secret route to get there. I'm going all the way back to the search for OpenJDK8 and I'm gonna do exactly what I said not to do. So we're gonna go to this OpenJDK Java net thing and then if we scroll down okay maybe the second choice here is download and install open jdk java net no okay so open jdk 8 search for that this open jdk java net projects jdk 8 and then i'm going to go to that doesn't look like it has anything but down here down the side they have a uh, JDK 8 update. Click on that one. 
And that will take us to this URL, the goal of the project build group. I know there is a way to find it through here. I've done it before. The wiki. Releases. Okay, so I went, I clicked that wiki link. It's wiki.openjdk, Java net, display, JDK, 8, up, main. So as you can see, it's kind of buried. It's not where you'd think. And then you come all the way down most of the page and it'll say releases, uh, latest general availability release, 8, update 265, which sounds like it's very recent. And then you can come in here and there's this binaries link. So let's make sure we have the right one. Looks like it, July 14th, 2020. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this binaries tag. That should take us back to some secret GitHub. So there's the GitHub URL that it took us to. As you can see, that's kind of, and it's through the open, the adopt open JDK, you know, which they weren't giving us this link on the website. It's just, it's really bizarre how much you have to kind of know what you're doing to get in here. So here's the general availability release. Of course, if you're using Linux, just try and even if it's not the latest, greatest, you might just want to just go ahead and go with whatever they're installing to make your life easier. But otherwise, because that will handle dependencies and whatnot. If you do this, you might have to get tricky. But if you do want the very latest one, you can, of course, get the Linux binaries here, um, maybe even the source and compile it against your system. The If you install the dev packages for your stuff and then you'll be... Uh, you'll have the best of both worlds because it should be compatible with your system and it should give you the latest stuff. And then there's, I think there's Mac stuff. You might have to go through Mac, you might have to go through Apple specifically to get the proper Java environment. So here we can see there's a bunch of x64. It doesn't look like there's x86, which is a bummer. Because that x64, of course, is 64-bit. The x86 is going to be the 32-bit um, but I do know, so anyway, I've showed you this far. You can, of course, custom compile your own. If I remember correctly, it wasn't too hard to custom compile Java. I don't think it had a bunch of dependencies, but famous last words, right? So let's go and look here. We've got upstream binaries, then we'll go to releases. Why do I not see releases? Have they changed GitHub around? Pull action. Da, 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 da. Okay, I'm going to go back. Get rid of everything except releases. And then I'm going to just scroll way back a little ways and see if, you know, they were probably providing 32 bit up to a point, I would imagine. And then they decided to stop. So. Let's just go ahead and say 832 general 232 releases October 15th, 2019. It's all looking like X64. Okay, not giving up just yet. I'm going to scroll back a little bit. This may be a dead end for us unless we want to get crazy and compile it, which I don't, you know, we'll just go with the Oracle release if we have to. And you know what, I don't even know about, yeah, that's about as far back as it goes. This is an early release build, so early access build, that's not ideal, still not doing that. Okay, no big deal. Um, what we can do here is go all the way back. I'm just going to go all the way back to that search, open JDK 8, and uh, what we can do is just say Java 8 Archive. So it's Java 8 Archive, right? And then if you look, right, one of the top results should be Java Archive Downloads, uh, Java SE8 Oracle Cloud. And this one is Java 8.2.11 later download. I we'll try that one. I've definitely done the Oracle Cloud and that works, but then you have to sign in. So maybe this one will bypass the whole having to sign in thing. And so we can see we're still pretty close, not quite 262 because they're behind um, you know, Red Hat has done those and then whatever weird corporate junk Oracle's got to do to catch up with themselves. So if we scroll down a little bit here, we have uh, JDK 8 update 251 Windows i586 
and of course that is the x86 32-bit version that's what you want don't get this x64 the plugin will not there's no plug-in going on in the 64-bit so we're gonna come across here it's about 200 megabytes click that and download it you're gonna have to click that you uh, reviewed their terms and stuff click click wrapped yeah I reviewed that sentence okay and right here you will sign in and download it um, I'm not gonna do all that junk right now but if you don't have an Oracle account you'll have to create one that whole thing to be able to access it so that's what sucks about Oracle it's proprietary and you know proprietary walled against you but it should be free it should be totally free to set up that whole deal you could even use a disposable email if you really wanted to if you have trouble with this 251 which I don't anticipate I know there are some people that run old software VPN software or whatever that depends on particular ones they uh, you can use the Java update 8 121 version which let's see if they even have that on this page so there's 221 211 um, I guess just come back here and try like the oldest one you can find if you do have trouble you can also go through that Oracle cloud page that I showed and this will um, definitely have the oldest ones I mean if you scroll all the way down you can see like it's just it goes ridiculous old like the very first ones so there's eight update five which you don't want to use that old but 121 seems to be one of those numbers that works for people if they have any trouble and you can see that's about halfway down right here Java 8 121 Windows X what there's a 32-bit one I got it already so I know there is which version is this J J R E so this isn't going to be the development environment this still should provide that plug-in um, Windows x86 right there this these offline ones are going to give you all the files you need for installation the uh, online ones you can see they're very small they're just they're going to download right off the internet I don't even know for sure if those will still work I imagine they should but for this 121 you'll want to start at this top see there's uh, 131 right there I'm going to scroll just below it 121 you can come down and you see that uh, Windows x86 it is in fact the JDK which includes the JRE it's under 200 megabytes BAM you want to click that one ideally if you're unsure and that's the one I'm going to use for this example for the install too it should be plenty new enough so that's how you can get Java follow the instructions install it uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you the manual way to create the folder so if we go here and I go to the C drive I'm going to scroll down to the program files x86 here and in there if I scroll down there's going to be I installed the Java 7 version and so if you have like an older version of Java this should more or less apply to that so say Java 1.7 going to go in here then you can see this is the JDK it's pretty much the JRE plus everything else I can go to this JDRE specific folder now this is just the JRE this is where the plugins at I'm going to go in the bin folder and then you can see plugin 2 which basically means like Netscape 2 plugin style plugin and then there's these two files I'm going to highlight them right click and go to copy and then I'm going to go back up to program files x86 and I'll go to that Mozilla Firefox folder um, getting weird on me not want to scroll Mozilla Firefox and of course that was my Firefox 1.0 and I renamed my 52 ESR to Firefox ESR so I'm gonna go in that one and there's no plugins folder here so what I need to do is go create new folder and this is where administrator access is required it might ask you for a password or something I'm gonna say continue and then I'm gonna type in plugins one word with an S and double click that and then I'm gonna right click and then go to paste and it's asking me for administrator permission to paste them I'm gonna say do it for all current items continue and then it pastes those right in there right so now if I go back to Firefox ESR and I open it you might have to dig into your start menu or whatever or just start typing as soon as you open your menu for Firefox 
And then if we go to about plugins, it's not there. It's still those same original ones. It's like, what? And if you go to tools, add-ons, you can see there's nothing about it there too. So it's like, what's going on? Well, don't fret. That was one of the things from that, uh, that plugin page here. We can see that it said, if this plugins load app dir plugins, if we highlight that, I just double click it and then slide it over and right click copy. And that's plugins.load underscore app dir underscore plugins is set to true. Um, that's the app directory plugins folder that we just created, kind of old school. So right there it's saying, hey, look in this directory that you're not used to looking in anymore. And of course, this is making it so that it should be specific to this new version of Firefox and not load in the Firefox 1.0 that I have or for you, any other Firefoxes. So what we'll do is we'll go to Firefox and we need to go to about config, about colon config. And then it will probably pop up a warning for you. Say yes, go ahead and enter. I've disabled that warning that can control V. And then there we see plugins load app dir plugins is set to false just double click it and then it sets it to true and it also will make it bold so if we get rid of this then all your bold stuff that you've changed as a user will be here on top so what you could do is just type plugins and then you can see that like those two the two that I've changed here um, are there it is set to true so if you ever wanted to set it back you could double click it again I don't see any reason why you would want to really unless you're just trying to be ultra ultra secure but if you're trying to do that why are you even here and uh, that should allow it to work so now if we go about plugins and I try and scroll it's still not there so what I'm going to do is close the whole browser out give it a second reopen it back up and now Go to about plugins. And as you can see, I now have a scroll bar. And there's the Java SE Update 87, Java 7 SE Update 80 plugin right there. So in theory, that should work. That should, right there, you should be good. What it will do though is if you go to tools, add ons, you can see that warning this one's known to be vulnerable and should be updated and it says ask to activate and you can only go to never activate so what it will do is it's going to ask you like hey you got to you're trying to run a java plugin and you'll click okay you know go ahead and run this plugin this one time or whatever and then even java itself is going to have some uh security stuff let's see here i'm going to go ahead and go to the control panel let me, yeah, so I'll go to this PC, go up one more folder, desktop, there's control panel, and then we'll do, um, in the search box, I'll type Java, nothing, hmm, I guess, I don't know, maybe that was a portable version, I don't know why it wouldn't be in here, system security, where's all, by category, Network and internet, system security. Usually there's a Java, I've got a flash thing. I didn't even know I had any flash stuff left on here. Programs, I don't know. There's usually a Java thing in there to, um, you know, set, you can lower the security requirements so you get less of the stupid pop-ups because last time I remember you have to click so many freaking pop-ups. Well, let's just check it out, what, what we're looking at here. So that was the whole thing to get that Java archive out. Right, I'm going to close that out. Here's a Wikipedia page for Java applet. Um, if you scroll down this, you can see there's like a hello world Java applet here, which I imagine should run. So one of the things I do is I'll select from the end to the beginning. That just seems to be less buggy. A lot of times we're going to take this code, open a text editor. and a new file in text editor, right click and paste it. And then I'll set this in my particular editor to Java. This editor is called Programmer's Notepad. 
you can search that out on the internet if you might be interested in it I like it and uh, so then we can go file save as and I'll just save it in my I have a little temp folder on my C drive you can just save it anywhere that you can find it that you have read and write permissions and I'll save it as a plugin dash test dot Java okay and then what I can do over here is open back up a uh, I mean if you have like some particular integrated development environment that you like this one's kind of like a lightweight integrated development so I have like Java compilers I don't know if for sure if any of these are Java 7 that I've custom put in here I don't even remember I haven't used it in quite a while so I'm not gonna screw with that right now but what I can do is go which and then say Java C which is the Java compiler so it's gonna try and use Java 11 by default so what I'll do is I'll just go to uh, program files Java and then I'll go to that folder and then we'll go into the bin folder here so then you can see there's a there we have the Java C right there and this is of course in this folder for me with this particular version of Java 7 so you want to make sure your whole stack needs to be 32-bit of course your operating system can be 64-bit but you want to make sure that your Java and your Firefox or whatever browser that might support MP API plugins is 32-bit and then what I can do here is go Java C and then I can punch manually punch in my temp folder of course you're welcome to use an IDE or whatever you feel comfortable with to do this instead of the command line and then I'm gonna put a plug in test Java and run that take a few seconds and we'll see how I've never tried this Wikipedia one they don't like public class extends applet one error Oh, I forgot Java. So I'm going to rename uh, C temp plugin. Java's pretty picky about how you name. Let's see, I might not have to type the full thing. So I'll type hello world dot Java. And then we'll do the same thing, but we'll just change this to hello world. Got a whole bunch. All right, there we go. And that worked. Well, at least the compilation did. And now if we do the same thing and get rid of the C and get rid of the Java and try and run it, can't load it. And that makes sense because it is a browser plugin thing. And it's been so long since, so let's see what they have here. Here's their little boilerplate for the HTML page. Let's go ahead and copy that. And we'll go back over here, create a new little file. Um, did I not even save that? pretty sure I did it's got an asterisk like as if I didn't save it so we'll see and then I'm going to set this one to HTML formatting and it's got the hello world class file whatever so if we save it to that same folder that temp folder in my case then uh, what they call it well who cares we'll just call it the same thing hello world dot HTML well, they called it a hello world example HTML it shouldn't be file name specific for the HTML file okay now we can go over we see we have that plugin enabled um, and it also shows up in about plugins it should just ask us security questions so I'm gonna go C temp hello world dot HTML Firefox has pre prevented an outdated plugin Java from running there so we're gonna click allow and then it says Firefox prevented that, da da da. And then we can say, remember this decision, that sounds good. And then here it is. Um, I think it's supposed to have text in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Control F5 to manually reload the page. Because sometimes when there's so many security checks like that, it stalls out and it screws it up then is it initialization. So Control F5, click in. The I, so right here I'm highlighted I'm in the Java app which basically is just like it's kind of hard to explain but it 
back in the day they used to give Java a gray background and it made it a little more obvious but when you're in Java Java has complete control of what's going on so what I'm doing is I'm clicking outside of the Java app to hit control F5 because it wasn't working so here it is I don't know it, it's definitely working because it says a Java app example here it is or at least for the most part what does it say here it is this should only display if you don't have the um, uh, the ability to run an applet there. The applet tag is deprecated. I don't know. Maybe the browser doesn't support the applet tag, but it did try and load that. Let's see what this program looks like. What it's doing? It's drawing a circle on the screen, so we're not seeing that kind of stuff going on. So I don't think it's truly working. To minimize the download time can be delivered via a jar file. Well, we didn't do a jar file. We did a class file for sure. It says draw string, hello world, draw a circle, draw a rectangle, draw another rectangle it looks like. So why are we not seeing that? Maybe I didn't, maybe my manual install, I don't know. There, I've definitely had trouble running some of these. I've never debugged this program, to be honest, or whatever. So who knows, it could be a zillion things. So now we're going to try plan B, which I, I was wanting to show anyway. So that's ask to activate. Let's go ahead and try it one more time. C temp, hello. Maybe this one, oh, it's having the asterisk, I think, because it's not saved as hello world anymore. G-L-O-O world dot Java. Yes, replace it. Okay, so let's try and see about embed Java app web page because the applet tag is pretty deprecated so let's go ahead and look at what stack overflow is recommending here using the following code but the class file is in a package which means my main class is inside a folder environment code They're all using the applet tag there. I mean, if you got this far, definitely try your own examples and they may be working by now. This, the biggest dimension is 300 with a 100, so that may be at least 400 wide or more would be a good idea. What are we here, height, let's do height 400, width, 400 or even like width 800 by 600 right I'm we're all should be at least that control save control s and come back over here go back to that C temp a G L O O hmm that's different it has a scroll bar here it is Okay, something happened right there, right? Weird, so glitchy. So I can't right click on it. That's how you know you're in the Java program. Like if I right click out here, it lets me, but if I right click in here, nothing's happening. That's because Java has full control of the mouse. So that's, this is Firefox. But right here, I, no, there it is too, huh? But over here, I can't. Just to kind of give you an example, all right here, I can't right click. There I can. Head on, has to activate. I just have to think maybe it's because of the way I manually installed it or something, or 
So what we'll try now, if you haven't given up, I'm going to shrink down that. I'm going to close that. I'm going to go back to program files. x86. I'm going to go into that Mozilla folder. Where are you? ESR. And then I'm going to just totally delete all this stuff. I'm going to get rid of those. It's going to ask me for uh, administrator permission to delete them. Yeah. And I could have just deleted the whole folder itself, which I'm going to do right here. Make sure it's highlighted. Delete. Yes. Okay, now if we were to reopen it, the whole, uh, all those, the uh, Java plugins, of course, should be missing. So about plugins, it's gone, no scroll bar, tools, add-ons, and then click plugins right here, and don't see it there, so that's good. Go ahead and close it out. Now we're going to go to... Uh, Actually, I'll just go do it from there. I have downloads, and then I have um, I have like a Windows folder, and then in here I have saved that Java thing. I can get rid of this 64-bit one. I don't need that. So I have that Firefox 32-bit there. What do I do with Java? So I have Java 8, 121, so I'll go ahead, 32-bit version, i586, of course. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. I double-clicked it. It's doing something in the background, I imagine. Trying to start up. It might take a minute. Self-signed plugin. And if it's not starting up, you can right click on your taskbar, go to task manager, and see that it might be just, it's kind of, my system's running slow, so I have to assume it is trying to start up. And then I can see what's hogging up the CPU right there. OBS Studio is, here's a Java binary. Um, hmm, I wonder what that binary is. It's not using much, there it goes, okay. Windows installer preparing. Go ahead and shut down this command window for now. So here we go. And even if you're using a newer version, it should be pretty similar. This will install this. So I'm going to hit next. The development tools. Yeah, I want that. This source code, that's up to you. It looks like we're going to save 27 megabytes if we don't. That's to uh, allow you to browse the actual Java API source code. So if you want to see how some particular class that's built into Java works, this source code will reveal that to you. To me, 27 megabytes isn't bad. I think it might be a zip file that has to uncompress, so it could be another 200 megabytes or something if you do that. This public JRE, we're going to need that. That's where the plugin's actually located. So if this path works, which it looks like it should, I'm going to hit next. And it will probably take forever to install. And if it takes too long, I'll probably just edit this video and speed it up and make a jump past right here. While that's installing, I'm going to kind of skim through. I know there was like an embed or object tag or something was like an alternative to running applet and has been the preferred way for a while. So either embeds applet into a web page or opens a new window. The applet can be displayed on the web page making use of the deprecated applet HTML tag or the recommended object element, the recommended object element. Um, the embed element 
can be used with Mozilla family browsers. Embed was deprecated in HTML4 but is included in HTML5. This specifies the applet's source location. Both object and embed tags can also download and install Java Virtual Machine if required or at least lead to the plugin page. That's another feature which you would have to enable. Um, I wouldn't even recommend it because it will who knows all this is unsupported at this time so it probably won't even line up with what it should and if I remember correctly in the past it was even getting weird Java browser plugin relies on MP API Netscape plugin application programming interface which many web browser vendors are deprecating due to its agent security issues in January 2016 Oracle announced Java runtime environment based on JDK 9 will discontinue the browser plugin so of course don't try and use JDK 9 or higher However, despite object being officially recommended tag as of 2010, the support of object tag was not yet consistent among browsers and Sun kept recommending the older applet tag. That's the way it always goes. Huh? Tag for deploying in multiple browser environments as it remained the only tag consistently supported by most popular browsers. To support the multiple browsers, the object tag currently re requires JavaScript. <laughs> like what was wrong with the applet tag? Like, why do they have to mess with it? You know, it just doesn't make any sense that they did that to begin with. Deprecating the applet tag has been criticized. Oracle now provides maintained JavaScript code to launch applets. Okay, so I guess uh, the embed tag is the way to go. I forgot why I launched that open. Let's find uh, HT... TML embed applet. And good old W3 schools. I usually go there first for just about everything. So applet is not supported in HTML5, so that makes sense why we could be having some trouble. It'd be nice if they complained a little louder about it in the browser. So most browsers no longer support applets and plugins, of course. We have here video, audio, embed, source snippet, embed a document. Do they have anything about Java? Object data? Looks like they're just double check. No Java there, so let's go ahead and scroll down here to the embed tag. Let's see if this one, or B applet, right? A P P L E T. Embed type. Most browsers no longer support Java applets and plugins. Yeah, but give us a link to where they do. It looks like this supposedly is supported in all the browsers. Okay, so in this case, W3 Schools wasn't the best. I mean, the fact that they just sway you away from doing a bad practice is good. The embed Java applet element. Obsolete still may use work in some things. The applet element was removed in Gecko 56 and Chrome 47. So let's say about, what is it? About build config, I think, or maybe, yeah. Uh, see what version of Gecko. I'm not seeing it specifically. I'll just do about. Gecko 2010. I'm not sure if that, you know, they can't use consistent. Let's see if this needs an update. Do, 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 do. Yeah, we said that would work. Java JRE. So it says it was open four years ago, closed three years ago. So about four years ago, which would have been 2016, it was open for a year. So I imagine that 
they removed that when they removed Java support, it sounds like. What is it? it has a good summary of what details Chrome has removed support already. Via a pref on part. So if that's the case, then what we need to do is go back to that about config and then just type in applet. Let's see if anything comes up. Signed applets code base principle support hmm, I wonder if that was issues related control F signed signed isn't coming up applet it's only that one result for applet so maybe if we say um, Double check that's going pretty quick. If I would have remembered to do that, let's go here and say uh, Java un, or I'll say Firefox unsigned applet. I think this fresh install should work. I'm actually going to close this out right after this. Block plugin blocks unsigned applets. Java update 51 plugin. Okay, yeah. So not having access to that uh, that control panel thing, there's no way we can adjust that. So what I was expecting was to get more pop-up warnings. So this is making sense. I'm going to close this out because I should have it closed anyway. Yes, for this to properly install in that folder. Um, I imagine it should be able to install no matter what, but it definitely won't show up until it's stopped and restarted. So what, I must have a half-baked install of that Java 7. It's kind of old. And um, somehow the control panel thing got corrupted, never installed or removed. So there's no way, it's obviously not triggering the Java plugin to uh, kick into gear. Let me see if I search here for Java again. I don't think it's Java Mission Control. Yeah, I guess it's just not there. The control panel applet's gone. So we'll see. We should just be right around the corner here once this sucker finishes going. Click through to the Netscape Navigator 2 plugin page. Taking forever to load. Never mind on that. Shrink this guy down. Come on. What I think happened was I installed a newer version of Java, like I had Java 7 and then I installed a Java 8 like this, and then what that probably did was took over the control panel settings, and then I uninstalled that newer version of Oracle Java 8, and that um, probably removed that control panel applet, but then I still had that Java 7, that's what my guess is. So it's installed successful. The next steps, give me a break. Just close it. And now if we go to the control panel here, control panel, um, Java 32-bit right there, boom. That's what we need to go into. I'm going to hit Alt-Space-X and use the arrow Alt-Space-Y. Uh, 
move, use arrow keys, move that down a little bit. So about Java control panel, we've got the Java 8 version. I'm just going to double check all these, use browser settings, temporary internet files, 32 megs. That's what I like to uh, keep it pretty low like that. And just hit delete files, trace log cache, just all that. Just clean all that up in case who knows what I've done with that in the past. Update. No, don't check for updates. Do not check before downloading. I'm going to hit apply so that that sticks. And then let's see what versions of Java. It's only detecting that 1.8. So that 1.7 in both user and system, which is good. Um, that 1.7 was just, obviously, this is why it wasn't working. So enable Java content in the browser to make sure that's checked. And then I would pick the very lowest setting they offer you here. I think on like the Java 7 or even 6 or something, they're going to have like a medium setting. That's the one you definitely want to add. Um, restore security prompts. I would not click that. If you've already somehow disabled them, they are just a pain in the butt. This edit site list, we might have to add local host or something. Applications launched from sites listed below allowed to run after appropriate security prompts. So if you are using sites on the web, you'll have to add them to this list, I think, manually. And then advanced, enable tracing, logging. This is probably got make sure Mozilla families check there. Um, just scrolling through looking at these. I can't remember. I don't perform signed code certificate revocations checked on do not check not recommended check that one because you just most likely don't want them trying to check certificate chains and stuff and then do not for perform tls revocation checks do not check this is stuff you're going to probably have to do to get this stuff to run or else you're going to have to take pretty extensive measures otherwise make sure that um, all the tls's are checked and store user settings in the roaming profile that's if you want the settings per user instead of the global registry check that this is that annoying java icon that you probably remember from so many years ago that would constantly say you need to update pretty worthless i'd make sure that's unchecked and suppress sponsor offers when installing or updating i would check that okay now let's see if that just works So we're going to go here, go to about plugins, and then we got the scroll bar. So it knew to find Firefox 52, at least this 121 update did. And if you're newer one, dude, right on, congratulations. So just like the Java 7, of course, it also has this Java deployment toolkit, which is a little bit more modern alternative to the plugin system. But you can't beat a plugin. It's just embedded right there in the web page. It's sort of like the original sort of how like Android apps work where there's like multiple points of entry and stuff like that pretty cool so go to options or excuse me go to tools add-ons and then we can see here's this stuff ask to activate are the only options for that um, deployment toolkit if you want you can even put never on deployment I don't use it personally but if you're just gonna use those old traditional plugins here all right now let's try out that temp folder stuff temp hello world dot HTML okay here we go do not ask again your Java version is out of date continue will be reminded block Java content from running update so we're gonna have to pick later these are the stupid annoying things that it does. A Java, oh, it flashed. It's try so here's the extra security updates I was expecting. For security applications must now meet the minimum blah, blah, blah. We control your life. And just because of that, we're going to disappear. And nobody's ever going to use this again. This is why nobody uses Java. Your security settings have blocked an application from running an out of date or expired version. Oh, wow, really? You've got to be kidding me. Okay, so this was it would be running right here. Click for details. Ignore. I clicked it and I hit ignore. Let's see. Um, setting the security level. 
So since Java 751 applets do not conform with the latest security patches can still be authorized to run by ex by including that host in that exception list I was talking about. So what you might want to do is download Java 7 update 50. Sounds like it's the ideal one. Starting with update 20 of Java 8, that medium security level has been removed. Only high and very high levels are the exception light uh, list provides the option of allowing the same applets that would have been allowed by selecting the median option, but site by site basis, therefore minimizing. Um, so we'll have to go there. Let's see if they have an example. So there's the old school one where you had the choice of the medium from Java 7. There's the one obviously from Java 8. How do we add local hosts? Stronger algorithm used to sign C changes, additional information. How can I configure the exception list? Manage the exception site list. Find the Java control panel. HTTP. It, don't forget to put that prefix in there, of whichever one. If we're running local, then let's go back over here. You can see, ooh, file. Yeah, so maybe we'll have to add file colon something. Okay, to save the URL, URL format. Uh, supported protocols, our file is included as one that's supported. The protocol, the port number, wildcards are not supported. A path is optional. A protocol and domain are required. So HTTPS. So that third slash on file, I think counts maybe as a domain. It's the path for sure. A path is optional. Only add a site exception if you trust the entire site. Okay, related example of different URLs. Deployment. It's funny they don't even actually not funny, but they don't even show how to add the file properly. So we're gonna figure it out real quick. So what we'll do is we'll go back to that control panel. Okay, I'm gonna close Firefox. At least we've made some headway there. Close Firefox, control panel, uh, Java 32, and we'll go to security. Edit site list, add, and then we'll do file colon and three slashes. The first two do the file protocol, and the third one does the path. And the path, that's literally saying everything under file right there. And as you can see, when I added that third one, it went from the exclamation point to the legit unlock thing. So we'll add that sucker. Location, file protocol, security risk, compromise your computer. Um, we're not scared so that works click OK there it is file OK we've closed Firefox now and now we're gonna reopen it Firefox 52 ESR 52.9 ESR to be specific so now let's go back to C temp and then another way to do this too is a file colon forward for we might have to do it like this actually to get it kick in um, forward slash C colon forward slash temp uh, forward slash I might be not doing this quite right we're about to find out uh, ORLD dot HTML there it is now let's see what it does okay these are better these are the ones that we can click through so your version of Java is out of date and an application load on your hard drive is requesting permission to run we recommend you update Java um, click cancel to stop it run to allow it so we're gonna click run there it is. Bam. You can see hello world. You can see that circle and the two rectangles that that uh, source code drew right there. So we now have full on Java. Finally, can't believe it. Uh, I'm going to try restoring this back to what it was here. Where was it? It was in here. If I remember what it was, I think it was like 20 high by 
200 or something control s to save that come back over here click outside of the applet somewhere and hit control f5 to reload yeah so the way they had it it was just that little box i don't think it's going to show properly so just change this to a height of 600 and then this to a width of 800 control s to save that come back over here and you can probably just click this reload there you go and there it is so anyway thanks for hanging out through that whole thing um, if the java 131 or higher didn't work for some reason try that java 121 remember to use all 32 bit remember to do the whole song and dance we did and uh, that's how you get all that stuff to work there